As we zoom in closer, I do want to remind you about this road closure that's affecting a lot of folks in Kentuckiana. That begins at 8 o'clock tonight and carries on through July 1st, unless, of course, they decide to open it back up sooner like they did last time. Eric and Haley. All right, Christina, thank you. Now, this closure comes after the I-64 westbound lanes went through the same process. Transportation leaders say it was a smooth process for the most part, and they're hoping for the same outcome this time. We saw some minor backups in the morning uh, peak time. Uh, a little bit of backup on 71 southbound at the Watterson interchange because those were the two detour route key points. Uh, but I think there were some adjustments made from the traveling public after the first couple of days. They realized what works for them and what uh, may work better if they went around a little farther or they followed the rest of the traffic. Again, those lanes shut down tonight at 8 o'clock and will reopen July 1st. Also happening today, all eastbound lanes of I-64 on the Sherman Minton Bridge will shut down. The lanes will close around 10 tonight, then re reopen at 5 a.m. on Monday. The closure will allow crews to do some diamond grinding on the bridge and remove temporary support brackets. During the closure, you're advised to take I-265 to I-65. Right now, investigators are looking into an incident at GE's Appliance Park that caused two employees to be electrocuted. GE officials tell us the two people were treated by the on-site medical team and then taken to a local hospital for further evaluation. Fern Creek's assistant fire chief said the two suffered minor to moderate injuries. And a man was arrested for trying to swim away from police in the Ohio River. The LMPD said Thursday they tried to conduct a traffic stop on 42-year-old Timothy Edison, who was wanted for multiple violent felonies. Police say Edison took off in his SUV, hitting several police cars. Officers chased him all the way down to the Greenwood boat docks. That's when police say he jumped in the water and started swimming to Indiana. But more officers were waiting for him on the other side. Eventually, police said Edison was pulled into their boat and arrested. New charges are pending for the chase in addition to the previous charges, including strangulation and assault. Three family members have pleaded not guilty to multiple charges connected to a little boy who shot himself after he found a gun. The incident is once again highlighting the importance of keeping household guns secure. Bobby McSwine spoke with a security expert who says these types of incidents can be easily avoided. When it comes to security, if it looks like a firearm, treat it as a firearm. David Gold knows a thing or two. Always keep that finger off the trigger an outside your trigger guard. And not just about how to shoot a gun, but how to safely secure it so that young people can't. These make any firearm unusable. Gun locks. Gold, the CEO of Gollum Security, continues to preach the importance of the tool. He was a part of a community event last year, handing out gun locks to people on 28th Street. The event was on the heels of an accidental shooting involving a two-year-old. Now, a three-year-old involved in a similar tragedy. The toddler shot himself in the leg on May 20th while his uncle was asleep and his parents weren't home. According to court documents, the three-year-old boy's family tried to treat him at home and cover up the shooting. Three hours later, they took him to the hospital and police were called. The three adults are now facing charges, including criminal abuse. Children are very inquisitive. And if they see something that you carry a lot, then that means to them it's important to you. So they're going to want to know what it is. And if you don't have it properly secured, you can have a very tragic influence. As of the end of April, Norton Children's Hospital reports treating 16 kids for gunshot injuries. It's why Gold teaches anyone including kids, gun safety. His company honored with the mayoral proclamation during the grand opening of its new facility Wednesday. It, it means a great deal to us, especially because when we started this, we did it for free. While he appreciates the recognition, Goat says his services are for the betterment of the city, and he wants gun safety to become an ingrained lesson. We're here for the community. We're here to take care of one another. We live in these places. We work at, along these people. And the three adults in this case were each given a bond of $100,000. If they do bond out, they're ordered to have no contact with the child and no access to firearms. They're due back in court next week. The man charged with killing two teenagers in the Delphi murder case is now accused of making incriminating statements while in prison. In court yesterday, the Carroll, the Carroll County prosecutor said the suspect, Richard Allen, confessed five or six times to killing Liberty German and Abigail Williams. Allen's defense attorney dismissed the statements. Allen's health was also discussed and his defense requested a transfer to a nearby jail due to his, quote, frail condition. The judge will rule on that matter in the coming weeks. Allen's trial is set for next January. 
Some more local news now. Investigators are looking into a rollover crash where a Louisville man died on Wednesday night. According to the Oldham County Police Department, 25 year old Patrick McKinney drove off West Highway 42, flipped and hit a utility pole. Witnesses say the crash happened after the speeding car crossed the middle line of the road and lost control. McKinney died at the scene. The Kentucky Horse Racing Commission has created a new position to oversee safety at the racetracks. This comes in response to the spike in deaths at Churchill Downs. The safety steward will monitor the barn areas and the racetrack. They'll keep close records of a horse's, a horse's entries, performances, vet treatments, and more. They'll also help with pre-meet track inspections. The person who fills the role will be the lead safety compliance at all racetracks. We're also learning more details about the 12 horse deaths that initiated some of those changes. The Kentucky Horse Racing Commission released its fifth mortality report. It's on Bosque Redondo, which died on May 15th. The report shows the four-year-old Colt was euthanized two days after he suffered a fractured leg during a race at Churchill Downs. Veterinarians described the injury as highly unusual. According to the report, no prohibited drugs were found in the Colt system and he passed pre-race exams.